Do you know which territory has the purple pitcher plant as its official flower? Don't look it up. Leave your guesses in the comments. Hello, I'm Tom with California Carnivores. It's a lovely day in October, and I thought we'd take an opportunity and dive into the species complex of Saracenia purpurea. Saracenia purpurea is one of the more ubiquitous species, and I say this because it has the largest range in the genus. You can find Saracenia purpurea growing natively as far south as Florida, Alabama, Georgia, up the Atlantic coast through the Carolinas, into Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, of course New Jersey, all throughout New England from Connecticut to Maine, and even into Canada where you can find it growing in Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and west into Quebec and Ontario. Of course, all around the Great Lakes region, from Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Minnesota, uh, and really their range encompasses most of Canada, from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, uh, across Alberta, as far west as British Columbia where it can be found growing in a little population right over the border with Alberta, which is crazy. That's, you know, within a few hundred miles of the Pacific Ocean. And we consider Saracenia to be this Atlantic coast species, but purpurea really spreads all over the place. It's amazing that these little purple people eaters can be found in so many places, and for many of us, right in our backyards. At the start of this video, I asked, what territory has the purple pitcher plant, Saracenia purpurea, as its official flower? The answer is Newfoundland and Labrador in Canada. I think that's really special. Here in California, our official state flower is the California poppy. Uh, let us know in the comments if you live where purpurea lives, what's your state or provincial flower? This all being said, with such an enormous geographic distribution, made up of many scattered populations, there's bound to be some genetic difference. Uh, generally speaking, Saracenia purpurea is divided into two main categories, north and south, with about two variations, and that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. Let's start with Saracenia purpurea subspecies purpurea. Subspecies purpurea is the northern form of the species, and will occur throughout most of Canada down into Virginia. As you can see, they're typically much darker in color, and the pitchers are really waxy and smooth. Botanically, we call that being glabrous, waxy and smooth. The next form we'll talk about is Saracenia purpurea, subspecies venosa, the intermediate to southern form of the species. Venosa occurs from around Virginia down south through the Carolinas. As you can see, it's venose. There's a lot of veins more present, but one of the key identifiers is the pitchers are usually a little softer, and you'll notice they're not waxy and smooth. They have a little hair or pubescence on them. Their flowers are also usually a very dark red color. The first of those two variations is Saracenia purpurea, subspecies venosa, variety montana, the mountainous form of the species. It's kind of like venosa, but usually it's a little bit more glabrous, waxy and smooth, and they have this characteristic pointed hood. The sun's coming out now, and that's just in time for us to talk about the far southern form of purpurea. That would be Saracenia purpurea, subspecies venosa, variety burkii. Variety burkii is characterized by these much larger, really soft to the touch, uh, tubby pitchers with an exaggerated lip and a floristic difference in that their flowers are typically this light bubblegum pink color and usually have a light colored umbel. Now, there is some controversy regarding the subclassifications of Saracenia purpurea. There are some believe there are no subvariants. It's all just Saracenia purpurea, although they usually recognize that mountainous form, Montana. 
and others still who don't recognize Saracenia purpurea, subspecies Venosa varberkii, but rather have it as its own species altogether, as Saracenia rosea. Now, there's good argument to be made on both sides, but I suppose here at California carnivores, we're a little old fashioned, and we still adhere to the Berkii and to those other subclassifications. It's important to remember that taxonomy and binomial nomenclature is a tool to be used to help us better understand the natural world, not a hard set of rules. And life on earth is messy and not always very easy to categorize. The mission of California carnivores has long been conservation through cultivation. Now, while we're always trying to create newer, bigger, more exciting hybrids, we also do a lot of species crosses. And not just species crosses, but locality crosses to try to preserve the genetic lineage of various localities. One such example are these beautiful Tattnall County, Georgia purpurea. We're fortunate enough to have a handful of these beautiful, beautiful plants. And we've crossed them together successfully a few times. And in the works right now, we have several flats of Tattnall County seedlings just waiting to go up on the website. But it's important. Whenever you're interested in locality plants or you put together a little collection like we do, or a big collection, that you include all of that information on your tags. The subspecies, the locality, and don't throw your tags away. There are many forms of Saracenia purpurea that don't necessarily have their own classification. One of them is this incredible form called veinless. And it's kind of like Saracenia flava variety maxima with those bright green veinless pitchers. Now it still does produce pigment, but you'll notice there are none of those characteristic veins. And then there are the albinos. If you didn't know, Saracenia produce their colors through anthocyanin pigments. But Saracenia have the rare chance to sprout without any of those pigments at all. We call that mutation anthocyanin-free, and Saracenia purpurea is no different. Here I have the northern form of the species, purpurea subspecies purpurea, and this is what we would call forma heterophylla. As you can see, it lacks all pigment. Even where the tissue is starting to die off, there's no stress pigments whatsoever. Anthocyanin-free plants are really, really cool. If you don't have one in your collection, you need one. If only it could be so easy that all the different anthocyanin-free forms were form a heterophylla, but that's not the case. The intermediate to southern form, Purpurea subspecies venosa, its anthocyanin-free form is called Forma pallidiflora. And Saracenia purpurea, subspecies Venosa variety Berkeyi's anthocyanin free form is Forma luteola. Saracenia purpurea are unique amongst the other Saracenia species in that they do not produce a lid or operculum to shield themselves from rain. Instead, they have a hood because Saracenia purpurea like to fill up with rainwater. This helps aid their digestion process. So if you grow Saracenia purpurea at home, it's a really good idea to overhead water them and fill up all those tubby little pitchers. With purpurea being such a widespread genus, there's really one for everybody. So if you're way up in the frozen north, there's the northern form. And if you're way down in the south, there's the southern form. And all of them are just so easy to care for and such a rewarding plant to have in your collection. Now, as a side note, I know some of you might be curious, what the heck are these orange flowers? These are called milkworts and they actually grow sympatrically right alongside Saracenia in the wild. But that's a topic for another video. But while we're here, I'll show you this grotesque mutation. This really strange purpurea is called Smurf. And there aren't too many named varieties. Like I mentioned before, California carnivores is all about conservation through cultivation.
And we do a lot of ex situ conservation. That means we produce a lot of these localities or species outside of their natural habitat. And one of those localities that I've been really excited about lately is Virginia. Unfortunately, like with many carnivorous plants, their populations are dwindling. And the plants in Virginia are really few and far between. One of those localities is Reedy Creek in Caroline County, Virginia. I think they have some of the most beautiful ruffled lids. We're so excited to have these in the collection and to be able to cross these flowers together to produce more Reedy Creek, Virginia purpurea. North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia are home to the Sand Hill Formation. There's a lot of very cool stuff happening behind the scenes regarding the purpurea from the Sand Hill Formation. And we're really excited to be able to grow some of these localities, like this gorgeous individual from Scotland County, North Carolina. One of my all-time favorite localities for Saracenia is Green Swamp. And we're really excited to be able to finally offer some seed-grown, horticulturally produced Saracenia purpurea, subspecies venosa, from Green Swamp. One of the wonderful things about having all these different forms in our botanical collection is our ability to cross them together to produce these plants for your collections at home. And one more really exciting locality we'll have for sale very soon is our Tattnall County, Georgia Venosas. These are by far one of the most beautiful purpurea forms, and we're just so excited to finally have enough that we can offer up to the public. I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the species complex of Saracenia purpurea. What's your favorite form? Mine has to be the Venosa variety Montana. There's something about those witchy pinched hoods. I look forward to reading all of your comments and seeing what your official flowers are. Thank you so much for watching.